Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am Tom. And for the latest on the offensive coordinator search for Alabama, we owe a shout out uh, promise that we will deliver on. We also want to set the record for most comments in a month. Last January, over 2,000 comments were way behind this month for February. So help us out by just responding to all the questions we ask of you guys throughout today's show and future shows. And as promised, shout out to Ryan Paris for the most comments on one of the recent videos here on the channel. Shout out to you, Ryan. Appreciate you watching and being subscribed here to the Alabama Football Report. More offensive coordinator search buzz, which is kind of quiet right now, which I find kind of interesting. Uh, one of the names mentioned by 24-7 Sports was Eric Bieniemy, and I hate it. Uh, not to be overly critical, but I think he's just a Patrick Mahomes merchant. Uh, the offense was not good in Washington. Really wasn't. You'll, you kept having Sam Howe constantly drop back and putting the ball downfield when he's not that great of an NFL quarterback. Kind of feels like we're just kind of out of ideas. Let's put Bieniemy in there, which is like every college of coaching search. Ah, what about Bieniemy? He hasn't coached in college since 2012. That seems significant, or at least worth mention. The college game is different than the NFL. The, the styles, what you do. I even go up and watch those uh, championship games this year, or the, the semifinal games. Motion, 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 motion. Wasn't really a staple of the enemy's offense in Washington. And you've also got uh, some issues of college coaches jumping to the NFL. Uh, you know, quality of life matters. Uh, and if, especially if you're an offensive coordinator and you don't want to recruit, NFL's better. Uh, you don't have to worry about it quite as much. You get a real offseason, which has only been amplified. It was already a thing, but it's only been amplified uh, by NIL, etc. There's really no good track record for recruiting for Biennemi. And yeah, you can find a couple teams that are willing to have their OC not recruit. Kind of think that's going to be the case with Chip Kelly, by the way. He's just not going to have to recruit at Ohio State. But he didn't have that experience, that, that successful background when the game has changed significantly at the collegiate level. And there is a reason he doesn't have a job. I don't think he's that great of an offensive mind. He's not terrible. Uh, you could do worse, I suppose. But I have no interest in adding the enemy. I don't think he's a good fit for what Alabama wants to do. His lack of a quick game was a massive concern for me for the commanders. And when half the NFL interviews you for a head coaching job and they all go, eh, no, that's probably be a, a red flag in general. You can disagree, though. This is America. I believe in disagreements and not just, you know, making you all say the same thing. Do you want Eric Bieniemy as the next offensive coordinator? Y for yes, H for hell no. Yeah, it's H, not M. Go vote to the pinned comment of today's video. The ad comes here on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Now, producer Chris's dream target is one Jamie Chadwell of Liberty. And this would be a, I would call this a home run hire. I don't know how feasible, how realistic it is, but this would be massive. Now, I think Chadwell harbors hopes of doing more than his current level of head coaching. He was the Charleston Southern head coach for a couple years, goes to Coastal Carolina, OC for two years, takes over as the head coach, now is the head coach at Liberty, and has had a lot of success in his role. It is worth mentioning this because we've seen other coordinators jump, or head coaches jump to coordinator roles, including multiple with Kalen DeBoer. He has done it twice already. This for this coaching staff, Kane Womack, and he's been able to pull away uh, Maurice Linguist. The differences here, I think, is that Chadwell's having more success at those jobs. He went 31 and 7 at Coastal Carolina the past three, th three seasons, then went undefeated at Liberty. Is it with Hugh Freeze's players? Sure, still got him undefeated. So, does Chadwell think he deserves more now? And would he consider an OC role a step up? beyond the Liberty head coaching job. I don't know if that's the case. You know, Womack and Linguist, to a certain extent, ah, you know, head coaching is going okay, but man, I can be a DC, a co-DC at Alabama. I could jumpstart my next job jump. I think that, that's what's happening here with Womack and Linguist and in theory, Chadwell, whoever. You're, you're looking to elevate your level so that in a year, two years, three years, you get a better sitting, probably power five head coaching job. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. Who do you want as the next Alabama offensive coordinator? Lots of routes you guys can go for this answer. Maybe internal is the path they choose to pursue. But get your votes in for me in the comments section right now. 
Alabama football jerseys also on sale for you guys, up to 30% off. You can get some of the, uh, the alumni players, I'll call it there. The, the, I almost said throwbacks, not really throwback jerseys, but the throwback players. Bryce Young, you, know, you can get Amari Coopers, Calvin Ridley, etc. cetera. Uh, Mark Ingram, I think, is available too. Any great player in the, from Bama, pretty much get their jersey. Go to the, com the comments or the description and click the link, chatsports.com slash Alabama jersey. That link, again, will be in the comments and the description of today's show. Up to 30% off. Not all of them are on sale, but a pretty good amount of them are. We'll eventually break down the whole coaching staff once it's finalized, but the over-under is already set despite the lack of clarity for the coaching staff. Vegas has set the over-under at 9.5 wins, which I think it's got to be the lowest for Bama since the first or second year of Saban's tenure, right? And we're talking about the bar is still 9.5 wins. Can you get the 10, right? Uh, returning production metrics here, always valuable. Overall, 44% of the, the, uh, the production is going to return. Would have been higher if not for some transfers. That's 115th in the country. More on offense, 56%, only 83rd. Defense, 33%. Not overly surprising. That's often how it goes for Bama because you're Alabama. Guys don't stick around for their, you know, junior or redshirt junior or senior seasons because they can jump to the NFL. Let's break down the schedule then with some predictions in here as well. You play August 31st to open the season against Western Kentucky University. Win. September 7th against South Florida. Win. Obviously, you hopefully by a bigger margin this time around. Uh, September 14th at Wisconsin. This will be a tougher game, and I do think one you kind of have to win to set the stage properly for Kalen DeBoer's first season. I don't believe in Wisconsin all that much. Uh, I, I, I think that they're not going to be a, a great uh, status uh, team. I, I'm not sold on them overall as things sit. Bye for Alabama in week four, which maybe the schedule makers helping them because they played Georgia the week after, but we're still going to give a loss to the Bulldogs on that front. I think they're the better team. Still going to be early in the DeBoer tenure. All right, into October at Vanderbilt. Vandy sucks. That's going to be a win. I always feel bad for, for crapping on Vanderbilt, but they're not good. Uh, South Carolina uh, uh, at home again. That should be a win for Alabama. Then it is the third Saturday in October. We're going to go with a loss for Tennessee. Now, that's already two losses, and you'll probably hear some of the ah, uncertainty around the uh, the board. Oh, my God, two losses. Fire him. Now you know, you, you know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. Uh, then a, another pivotal game against Missouri, an underrated Missouri team. I, I think you're going to split those two games. One of them on the road will give the loss there. Missouri's not a bad football team. They, they did really well last year. They're going to miss some key pieces on defense, though. I'll give the, the, uh, the title of the win over the Tigers. Then another bye in, or to begin, I should say, November. And that is where the schedule's going to change. The final three of the final four games We'll determine if this team makes the CFP or not. We'll break that down in a moment, but first, the goal is 20,000 subscribers by A Day. 61 days to go. We need 3,000 subs to get there. Can we do it? It's a stretch goal. I believe in you guys. Hit that sub button for me right now. November 9th, give me the win over LSU. I reserve the right to change my mind based on how the new look LSU offense will fare without. Three first-round picks at two at receiver and one at QB. You beat them last year, though. I think you can beat them again this season. Then Mercer. Mercer. Uh, you'll screw around for the first quarter, then wake up and win by 45. That's how it always goes. Two massive games here down the stretch. November 23rd at Oklahoma. I'm not sold on Jackson or we got a quarterback for the Sooners. So give me the win on that front. It's going to be on the road. That will not be easy. And look, with the expanded college football playoff, you're not going to have like, you know, Michigan, Ohio State be winning in anymore. However, this game might be now. So the, the types of games that matter change. You're going to have maybe less qu quality of like the, you know, one verse two isn't as impactful as it maybe used to be. But, you know, now you're in like 10 verse 15 matters insanely more than it ever would have. I think this game could be one of those examples. November 30th, you will never see me pick uh, Auburn to beat Alabama because what's the point? Uh, Auburn also does not have a QB still, which seems important to remember. So 10-2 and two in the SEC 
probably gets you in, especially if you lose to, let's say, Tennessee wins the SEC East and Georgia wins the SEC West. You would then be the, the third team. I think that should be the expectation, the goal, and the bar to get for this first year of Kalen DeBoer. I do not anticipate a national title. I don't think you're going to win the SEC. That's, that, that's obviously disappointing to an extent, but that should not be the, the you know, all in or nothing. Like, if you make it to the Final Four again, that's a great first year for Kalen DeBoer. Coming up short in the final year of Nick Saban, a bit more of a disappointment if we're being objective and honest here. Nine and three still might be enough to get you into the SEC. Now, you're going to put four teams in there? Wouldn't surprise me. That's how college football tends to work. So, that, so they have a real chance at making that happen. And that should be the goal for Alabama. Can you get in to the college football playoff in year, the expanded one, in year one of Kalen DeBoer? So I do think nine and a half is a pretty fair over-under for this team. Over or under, 9.5 wins. O for over, U for under. Get those votes in for me in the comments section.